I could say one thing about Jamonville, I would say that it is my favorite place in the whole world. My name is Jay Beatty, and I have been at Jamonville for 33 years. My name is Jim Thomas. I am Director of Program Services here at Jamonville Christian Camp and Retreat Center. My name is Larry Beatty, and I'm the president of Jamonville, and I've been here since 1982. Uh, the history of Jamonville is very unique. The name Jamonville itself comes from a French guy who was actually killed by George Washington when George Washington was only 21 years old. There was a conflict between the British and the French, and he and some Indians marched through the woods through the night, surprised the French at breakfast, and the scuffle that uh, happened after that uh, resulted in a um, French officer by the name of Jamonville being killed. That is where we got our name Jamonville, so we're named after a dead guy. Later, in 1875, the Pennsylvania Soldiers Orphan School moved here from Uniontown. It was set up to help provide uh, children whose fathers were killed in the Civil War to have food, clothing, uh, an education and a trade so that they could go out and make a life for themselves. It was really more like a Votech school. They came and lived here at Jamonville and stayed here till they were 16 years old and they learned a trade. They would learn to be a blacksmith or a baker or a seamstress, any one of a number of different things that they would learn. And that school ran until 1908 when the school was then changed and moved to a place called Scotland, which was actually Scotland, Pennsylvania. After the orphan school closed, it went through a number of different owners. Uh, people tried to make a uh, resort out of it. It was the Dunbar Springs Hotel um, and went through a number of different possibilities before in the 1940s becoming pretty much vacant and abandoned. At that point in time, one of the trustees of the orphan school by the name of Harry Wow owned the property and he donated the property to the Methodist Church so that it could become a camping program for children and youth. And then in the early 1970s, my father, Bill Beatty, became the first year-round director at Jamonville. He served in that capacity for 10 years and then there was one director in the interim there for just a year and a half and then I came on board in 1982. So the family roots go way back through that. Jamonville is probably best known for the big white cross on top of the hill, but that cross wasn't always there. That cross was actually built in 1950 and was dedicated in 1951. So that was about 10 years after Jamonville started. There was actually originally a plan to have a giant wooden cross on top of the hill, and they had selected a redwood tree from California. They couldn't get it shipped across country, so that plan didn't happen. Then there was plans to have a big concrete cross, and there were problems with that. That plan didn't happen, and then came the idea for the giant steel cross, and that steel cross was actually fabricated in Latrobe, and that was the cross that we have up there now. Initially, the children from the United Methodist Sunday Schools throughout Western Pennsylvania donated their nickels and dimes to help with the project, but they never really fully paid for the cost of the cross. And then Lou Steiner, who was the one who had it fabricated in his foundry, ended up donating then the rest of what the costs were for actually building the cross. One of their first issues was how do we get it up on top of the mountain? And there wasn't a good roadway to be able to do that when they first tried to take the main shaft of the cross, which is 60 foot long up to the cross. They got stuck with it and had to build some new roadways to be able to get it up there. And then once they finally got the cross there and the two side arms, they had already built a concrete base, but the cross was so big and so heavy when they tried to use the crane to lift it up to put it on that concrete base, the crane actually lifted off of the ground and they had to bring a second crane in so that the two cranes could coordinate together to lift the cross and then place it on the concrete base.
One of the other things that's a landmark at Jamonville is our entranceway, and there's actually been several entranceways, but typically the entranceway has always shown four flags, and the four flags are the French flag, the British flag, the United States flag, and the Christian flag, and that represents the four different parts of our history. The French flag being the start with Jamonville and the British flag being George Washington, then the United States flag being representing the part of time of the Soldiers' Orphan School following the Civil War, and then the Christian flag being the start of Jamonville as a camp and retreat center in 1941. Of course, we have a summer camp, and that has been going on since 1941. Uh, somewhere back in the 90s, they started a, an extensive retreat uh, season, which goes from May, uh, I'm sorry, which goes from August to May. Uh, and just about every weekend, we have a number of retreat groups ranging from youth groups, churches, businesses, uh, groups looking to do uh, some sort of adventure activity, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a well-rounded and well-grounded uh, adventure experience from low ropes to high ropes. We even have an adventure center where you can do some bouldering or some back, uh, some top rope climbing in our back room. Uh, that means you get on a harness and you climb to about 35 feet or you can do some repelling as well. Aside from that we have extensive sports fields and arenas like we have tennis courts, volleyball courts, both sand and hard court, basketball, uh, we have a softball field or soccer field. Uh, there's also Gaga Paul, uh, nine square in the air. We have a bowling wall and an extensive playground for uh, children who are younger than, say, five. So, and of course, people play on that anyway, no matter what age they are. So like any place, Jamonville has a snack shop. We have a new cafe. We are rolling out a whole lot of great coffee for some of uh, our adult groups that come in, as well as group leaders who are just looking for a great cup of joe. Uh, and the occasional camper who also wants a great cup of joe. But we are complete with Nalgene bottles, we have t-shirts, we have great sweatshirts, uh, we have full service ice cream station. And so really we just want to bring you some comforts here at camp. I met Mr. Beatty's son and all the girls thought he was so cute with his curly hair. And um, there's seven years difference between us, so I was just a young camper at the time. And I remember having him sign my picture in the midst of some other adventures of uh, kayaking and climbing and caving. We got to know each other. We had worked in some camps together. Jay and I that actually met at Jamonville were married at Jamonville. We've raised our three kids at Jamonville as well. So Jamonville has become our life. Raising three kids here, they all loved the fact that they had a 300 acre backyard with swimming pool, tennis courts, ropes courts, climbing walls, all those kind of things. And all their friends were very jealous of the place where they got to grow up. Never imagined that God would actually uh, bring about the circumstances for me to live at Jamonville and serve here for all these years. It's been an absolute joy and privilege of my life to do that. Well, first and foremost, I was a camper here at Jamonville from 1991 till 1999. Later on through my college life, I eventually met uh, the woman who would one day become my wife. Uh, I decided to propose, and that was at the cross, uh, after a very long week of camp. And as many of you know, there is a rock quarry about a mile down the road from Jamonville, and often they blast in the quarry at night. So I pop the question, she says yes, There's an ex the ground rumbles from explosion, or was it? Later on, uh, when I became a youth leader uh, and a youth director at different churches, I began to bring my uh, retreat groups here, which consisted of my junior and senior high kids. And I brought them here because I knew the quality experience that I had had and I had seen many others have, and so I wanted to, my students in a small way to experience the Jumonville that I knew and appreciated and loved. So throughout the years, we had many great experiences here, many great retreats, many things that God had done to really work in the lives of campers and students.
one of the ways that a lot of people connect with us and reconnect with Jamonville is through Jamonville's Facebook page. And we just every day have people on a regular basis telling us how important Jamonville is to them and how great it was for them living in the community around Uniontown to be able to look up the mountain and be able to see the cross standing there. So it's been extremely significant for people who maybe never even came to camp here, but have just always known Jamonville and this represents home for them as well. One of the ways that many people get involved here at Jamonville is either by joining Summer Staff, which is, has a long tradition of training college students um, to become leaders and to lead in adventure activities, uh, and more importantly, leads uh, campers in Bible study and just overall uh, summer camp experience. So one of the ways that someone else could get involved is there's volunteer opportunities, there's employment opportunities for summer staff and weekend staff, given that we have an extensive retreat season. Jamonville has a pretty substantial website and we have a lot of people who come from a considerable distance to be able to spend their week of their summer at Jamonville for summer camp. And you can do that by registering on the Jamonville website. It's a very user-friendly process to be able to do that. You can also see other events we offer, for example, a Easter sunrise service that a lot of the folks from the community are involved in. So no matter what your age is, whether you're a young child and you're looking to be able to do a week of summer camp, a number of our summer camps are also open for adults as well. So you're never too old for that. Jamonville has fantastic facilities, but Jamonville is not just a place. Jamonville is an experience. Jamonville is not only physically separated kind of from the world being on a mountaintop, but it offers you kind of a step away, uh, which often brings you to a place where you can refresh, uh, rejuvenate, and really just kind of escape the world for a while and find that peace that you may not find elsewhere. There is something special about this mountaintop. And once you've been here, you're part of the Jamonville family and there's nowhere else like it. If you really want to have that time away where you can just escape the world and not have the cell phone going off or emails on your computer or uh, your DVR is full and all that other stuff, just take a step away and just be in the presence of God. Jamonville is the place to do that. It's a mountaintop where people come and grow closer in their relationship to Jesus Christ, some for the very first time. And it is a wonderful place that God has blessed us and I feel that God has literally put an anointing on this mountaintop. So come and be a part of Jamonville with us.